Hi everyone! Thank you so much for tuning in. This is The Word with Joy and my name is Nemo Fori. So I hope you're doing good. We had snow again. This is another week in a row. It's, it's like February wants to give us snow every week and I'm okay with that. I like snow. I'm very okay with that. Uh, thanking God for his mercies and his goodness over everyone. I hope you're safe and have fun in the snow. Um, yeah, so let's get into today's word. Oh, but before that, if you like this video, click on the like button, please do so. Um, share with your friends, your family, your loved ones, if you think this has been a blessing, so it can bless them too. And yeah, finally, subscribe, 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 and click on the notifications bell if you would like to be notified when there's a new video coming up. All right? Okay, great, great, great. So let's get into the word for today. Holy Spirit, I pray that your word will reach each one, myself included, and will receive the power to do what we need to do to make impact in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. We're going to go into something called today. Don't discount it. Don't discount it. All right. You will understand later as we talk. Um, we're going to go through a couple of Bible characters and see what happened and, you know, when things were, they were discounted or something, the situation was discounted and then it turned around. So not to ever lose hope when we have a situation that we're not really sure of. Just don't discount it. Okay, God is still in it. All right, so we're going to look at David. Remember David last time we talked, um, he was being replaced by Saul. God, I mean by God replacing Saul as king. And Samuel was instructed to go to Jesse's house because he was going to give, one of his sons was going to be the king. So here in 1 Samuel 16, we're, they're talking about Samuel going to visit Jesse and looking for a king. And Jesse brought all his sons out, <clears throat> or supposedly all his sons out, right? And, um... There were seven of them and, and Samuel was like, maybe this one, maybe that one. But it, it turns out that like none of them were. You know, God was like, nope, none of these. So verse 11, Samuel was asking to Jesse, are all the young men here? And he said this to Jesse, there remains yet the youngest. And here he is keeping the sheep. Oh, really, Jesse? Like Samuel, like David's not your son. Like, do you understand? Like, it's just like, he, he discounted him so much that it was like, yeah, there's a, the last one. He can't be king. That's why he didn't even bother bringing him. Yeah, he's like, he's out there with the sheep, smelly and dirty. Remember when like, they went into, to fight Goliath later on? He, David wasn't even part of the soldiers. Remember, he was beaten. He was youngest. He was like a home. He was bringing them supplies. And I feel like parents do that a lot. Okay? I remember my sister, my, my baby sister, who's not a baby anymore, but... All of us girls went to the same secondary school, FGC Bwari, and um, we were all there. We all we all went through morning duty and cutting grass and everything, you know, waking up at 5.45 and eating yaman oil on Saturday. You know, like we went through the whole thing. We were there. We made it work. But my sister, when she joined, when when um she came in just one, I don't think she lasted one semester. Maybe she did. And my mom ended up like taking her back home when she complained about school and then she became a day student she was like in school in town not like in the outskirts like we were she was home every night watching tv whenever she wanted I was a driver taking her to school while i was trekking the classes you see my drift like usually like young the younger the youngest ones are like the ones that they go no they can't handle that much you know it's too much too tough too crazy out there you shield them more i mean i do the same thing now with my kids my older son, when he was seven, his job was to take out the garbage, like to the front of the driveway outside. And I didn't have a problem. You know, he looked like, yeah, you're big enough. You can do it. And he did it. And he's been doing it. But now my youngest, who's 11, he, yeah, he, I mean, he takes garbage out to the, to the down, you know, brings it downstairs to the kitchen or whatever. But he's not, he doesn't take it out to the front of the driveway, you know. And this that Paul, oh, he's, he's the youngest. Leave him. And that's the thing, right? We we discount them. And that's exactly what happened with David. His his father was like, yeah, he's the youngest. Well, okay, fine, let's bring him. And he ended up being the one, because in verse 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day. It's like, this is who the king was, but he was being discounted. So that's a lesson for us, not to discount anybody or anything, because you don't know what the plan of God is concerning that. Okay, and we're going to look at just a couple more real quickly. Um, remember the story of the feeding the 5,000? This is in, So John 6, 1 to 14. We're not going to read the whole thing. But um, Jesus is now asking Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And one of the disciples later on in um, verse 8 Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. What are they among so many? So here they are discounting the fish. Like, ah, 
it's only five and, and two, seven. We're like 5,000 men and not including women and children. So he was like already discounting that. Like it's not even going to work. What we have is not enough. But God doesn't ever care about what we have. You have to trust in his own ability to do what he's going to do and what he can do with what you have. So the same way what he did with the widow, he was able to multiply it. And of course, we know the end of that story where... Jesus took the loaves when he had given thanks, he distributed them to disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So they were, they were filled. He said to them. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. So they had more than enough. Remember the widow? She had more than enough. Remember David? He was anointed and became bigger than his brothers, like way more. It became the king. All right. So one more we're going to look at. Um, this is... um. Again, with David, this is when he faced Goliath. And Goliath was like, what is this? And who is this? Right? Because Goliath is like a big champion, the you know, a giant pretty much. So this is 1 Samuel 17 and verse 43. When he's talking to David and he says to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. But if we go into this verse 49, it now says, then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth the stone killed him and he came with like a spare and he came with all his might and his strength and everything and yet yet even though he discounted david and said this is not gonna work you're, you're you do you think i'm a dog you're coming at me with that and he died a couple of minutes later it was done it was over the little boy with the sticks killed him all right so he was discounted and it was a mistake so i just want someone to know today like you know what whatever it is that you you think, don't discount it, okay? If you're a child of God, whatever you have, God can use it. That situation can turn around. Let me tell you about, um, so I went for an interview the other day, right? And it went well a little bit. It went well. It generally went well. Like, I'll say like 80%. And then at the end, they're like, we're going to do it in Excel tests. It's a long, it's a long test, but I'm going to just give you a short version. We're going to do an Excel test. Like practical and i love excel but i've not like been exposed to all the advanced features i was like sure i can do it let's go let's go um and then when it was time to do the test i bailed i failed woefully it was bad it was very bad i mean there were like six questions i only i, I didn't even get through question one do you understand how bad that was yeah um but anyway so so i discounted it myself i discounted it all right it's kind of like, so like how we looked at David, how his family discounted him, Goliath discounted him. We looked at how um, the the people, the disciples discounted the boy's food. So those other people discounted, right? Going, yeah, that guy is he's so young. Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, yeah, I don't But no, remember the widow? She was the one discounting herself. And she was like, yeah, this, I only have, you know, a cup of flour and a little oil. You know, I don't have enough. That's the same thing I was doing to myself. I was like, gee. As soon as that thing was over, I didn't even bother doing the thank you. You know how you're supposed to like thank you, you know, for your time. I appreciate it. And I hope you kind of like reiterate your skills. I was just like, I'm not even going to bother. I know how bad, I know how bad it was. So I left it. I discounted myself. Like I'm not going to be called. But lo and behold, faithful and merciful God. Because I prayed, of course, you know what? In the end, you still pray. No matter what's going on, just pray about it and still call it forth. In spite of yourself. Because you know what happened? They called me back and they offered me a position, even with my nonsense Excel skills, which were clearly on display. And I mean, if it wasn't for God, right? So don't discount it. I want to encourage somebody today. Do not discount yourself. Don't let other people discount you. Because as we've seen in the Bible and even in my own situation, God is still able to use that which he has given you, no matter how small you think it is, no matter how irrelevant you think it is, to elevate you and move you forward, regardless. Do not discount it, all right? So I hope you've been blessed. I hope this is, means something to somebody. And I hope you can use it. You know, go ahead and use it. Don't just hear the word, do the word. All right, so thank you so much again for tuning in. I appreciate it. I pray you have been blessed. Have a wonderful time. Oh, well, before we leave, we just had the Super Bowl, right? I hope you didn't discount the winner. That's just me being silly. All right. Take care. We'll chat later. God bless you. Bye.